Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, Major League Rugby Talk with head coach Mike Tolkien of Rooney. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Irish Rugby Tours, the Rugby Tours people. A balanced palate, nutrition for peak performance. And the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody, Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan, talking rugby, and we are talking Major League Rugby. Steven, welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome back from Vegas. We have a very special guest with us, Mr. Mike Tolkien, head coach of uh, Rooney, Rugby United New York. Michael, welcome. Good to be here, Matt. Thanks. All right, so gentlemen, uh, another big, big weekend in uh, in rugby, but we're going to talk specifically with you about Major League Rugby. Like, I want to go back in time a little bit. Was Brock Stoller offside? No, I did. I did look at it a few times. So we all did, but uh, no, no, he was he was right on. Yeah, that okay. was legit. All right, that that ruined my pick in that week. Just just for the just for the record. All right, but um, so on that point, picks. How, how are we doing so far? How are you? Steve wants to get right to people? the picks. He went because he was three and zero again. Three and zero again. Uh, but we're gonna get to that in a little bit, Steve. We won't forget that. Uh, Coach, your team is three and one. You've started on the road. Uh, you've got uh, all but two of your first eight matches played on the road. You're three and one right now. You've beaten your two understudies from the Rugby World Cup coaching staff so far. Two out of three that are head coaches, Justin Fitzpatrick and Nate Osborne. Did you have any comments, like not, not yet grasshopper or anything like no, that? No, no, no. We just had good, good words, you know, and uh, had a few laughs and everything, and Looking forward to the next week, but it was really good to see them. You know, I haven't seen them that much since uh, since the end of the World Cup. Challenges for you guys on the road in a league that you don't know anything about. You don't have you have a player carousel going on. How do you make a game plan? I think you know you, you got to approach it the same as you do any game plan. But uh, you know the experience and travel helps. But uh, we've never had experience like this. You know, it's uh, we're going on five weeks on the road. But the guys have been great. I think keeping the energy high, um, giving the guys breaks when we can, and, and just trying to have some fun. You know, it's really important for being on the road this long. Climate New York, February, January, preparing a team as a coach, limited time outside. Challenges there? Yeah, big, big challenges, Steve. I think we, we've kind of tipped over through a landmine in terms of snow. We've had some cold days, but we've been able to, to get through them. So a little bit lucky, but uh, I think the the point is that we keep the guys moving at training. We, you know, we don't extend it, and uh, you know, we kind of get down to business. And the other side of it is, guys had really good attitudes out on the field and at training. And you know, like I said, they're having fun, and uh, we're trying to get something done, and we're all working on the same thing. So we've been able to overcome it so far. And, and as you said earlier, winning helps. Winning definitely helps. It, yeah, that that above everything else helps coming out on a cold Tuesday night. You plan accordingly. Um, the weather, or you just stick to your game plan regardless because of all the X factors? No, it, it, you know, it, it has been two warm climates and then two cold climates that we've been at, and uh, it, it, it's been a little tough in terms of uh, guys not being used to it coming out of winter, you know, especially New Orleans. Uh, Houston was wound up being nice, but uh, San Diego, a little hotter, um, especially for the guys coming over from Ireland. They're not used to this. But um, the games have been different. They've definitely been different. We've planned a little differently in how we want to play in certain climates. So fresh legs, more in the second halves of some of these. Yeah, legs, tactics. Um, you know, playing in in the heat versus playing out in Seattle is is going to be a different approach. All right. So the irony here is that weather was the reason for New York and Toronto starting most of their games on the road, and yet Toronto goes to Glendale and plays in a blizzard. They could have very easily done that in Toronto. Right, and you, you have the same thing with Nola going to Utah, ski country, and that's a blizzard. And they they sneak out, they 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 pick out a win out of there. All right, so you got a home opener looming in in two weeks. Uh, Friday night lights, if I'm not mistaken, at MCU Park, the home of the New York Mets affiliate, the Brooklyn Cyclones. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, I I, I know all the guys are really excited. Uh, we're all excited to be home. We're all excited to be in front of uh, the New York fans. I think everyone is really anticipating this one, uh, you know, with a lot of enthusiasm, especially coming in on St. Patty's weekend, uh, you know, on that Friday night. Yeah. And we'll see what the weather is like, but it's going to be fun. 
Yeah, and um, a court, uh, apparently the tickets are going, the sales are going well. MCU is handling that. Steve, do you know what MCU stands for? No, is what you talk? Do you mention the Mets? Is that is that a baseball team? It is a baseball team. Steve. Is that your baseball team? Yeah, they're like the Scotland of baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Is a, right? is a good volley back yeah, and forth, yeah. fellas. Yeah. <laughs> we could keep, I could keep going here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, anyone want to answer what MCU is? No. Take a crack at it. I think it's, um, I want to say it's, uh, never mind. We don't know what MCU is. Write us in. Aaron Castro, that, that, tell us that, what MCU is. That was a broadcasting own goal right there. You brought it up. You didn't know the answer. Yeah. Well, it's my show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So take out Rooney out of the equation. Who are the top four teams in the MLR from your standpoint? I, I think early on, you know, from what we've seen so far, Nola has been uh, showing a real willingness to run and score points and get bonus points. That's really big in the league. They've been they've been solid. Seattle has been solid. Um, I had a couple of slips in the beginning of the year, but certainly when we were up there, they were a formidable side and getting, you know, back into gear. Um, I think Glendale, once they get their guys back from the Eagles, will be will be strong as well. So I, I think for me, those are the ones. Toronto, the same thing. They're missing a lot. They're a strong physical side. So for me, those are the ones that stand out now, but it is a long way to go. Um, you know, it'll be more than most guys have played uh, in a year, in a season. Yeah. And with all this travel, especially for those teams I mentioned, they're going to be doing a lot of traveling back end of the schedule. So things will change around a lot, but that's, that's how I see it right now. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like um, two seasons within the season, right? So there, there are teams who are heavily affected by the ARC and national team call-ups, Toronto, as you mentioned. From your, your perspective, you're not really, I mean, you're two or three. Um, so in some ways, that's a benefit because you, you, you get more cohesive earlier, um, whereas some of these other teams are almost restarting in about two weeks' time. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it definitely helped uh, in, that, in that sense. And, uh, you know, I think everyone's looking forward to their break. Um, I know our next one is, I think, in three or four weeks' time. And it's, you know, I, I see it as like when you're driving and you're getting low on gas and you're just hoping you can get to that gas station, you know, with some gas in the tank and pull in and refill. And I think that's how people will be looking at their next break as well. Not like going to Buffalo on a bus. And well, if you get out of the city. <laughs> <laughs> if so, you don't, you don't have to worry about it. So what's been the toughest road trip so far in terms of just uh, toll on the players? I think probably Seattle. You know, I think San Diego, it's the first one. There's a lot of enthusiasm. The weather's warm. Um, going to Seattle is always a long trip. It was pretty chilly there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, it, so all those things, it, it was a tough one coming back on a red eye. Um, Oof. that's always tough. And then we have another red eye coming back. Tell, from Salt tell Lake. me about it. Yeah, yeah. Steve, I can, <laughs> showing the effects of a red eye. You still look really good. Steve. Thank you. Thank you. So for the folks at home, Steve was in Vegas for seven days and 14 nights because that's what Vegas is like, right? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. Uh, so, so who are the surprise players for you on the roster? And James Denise getting a brace. That's nice. Coming out coming out of retirement of sorts, right? Yeah. Well, James was coming off injury. Um, so he was always planning on coming back, but it took him a while. And he's come back at a really important time because John Quill's been out and a couple of the forward, Nate Brakeley's out. So we're uh, When you say out, you mean with the ARC? With, with the ARC, with the Eagles. So James's emergence has been really good. And other guys, Matt Houston's picked his game up, which has been great. Um, you know, and... and Various guys have stepped up. You know, Chris Matina is still getting his feet wet in 15s mode uh, after a, a stint with sevens. So, you know, he's he's coming on well. And uh, I think some of the young players, Mark O'Keefe, um, coming from Lansdowne, has been really, yeah. really good. So, yeah, um, just on that personnel stuff. So this last week, little switcheroo in the back line there. You put Ben Foden back to fullback. O'Keefe went to center and Chris went in the wing. Um, is, that, is that Hume's out, Hume, Hume string? So you, you want to... Is Foden going to be permanent at 15, I suppose, my question? A hume string, I hume like string. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a good one. I like hume strings. Um, but, yeah, Ben going back, um, you know, it was a few things. He, he was going to be there. Um, then Seamus, you know, had to retire. And so, you know, we needed someone at 13. Foden has a lot of experience. Um, not necessarily at 13, but filled in r really well there. Um, but then we moved him back into 15. And, you know, he was, he was fantastic against Houston. Uh, so... Yeah, I, th I just think it's going to be, you know, as we go along. But, um, you know, Fode's definitely had a good good game at 15 and looks like the uh, the player coming out of the premiership, and you know, that he is. So I'm noticing Foden kicks for touch sometimes and Hall, Marsh, does or doesn't. Or what's yep. 
does it, is it situational? No, they both kick for touch. Yeah. yeah. So is it? <laughs> no, I mean, they both kick for touch. Is there a strategy in that, or is it just, uh, hey, you you take this one? Yeah. I know. That's what it is. Yeah. You're, you're not going to tell me, are you? I just did. All right. I don't believe him. I don't trust him. Don't overthink it. I won't. Okay. That's my problem. Over th- overthinking has never been something I've been accused of. <laughs> Final questions for Coach Tolkien because he's got a jog. You had a break, but it was only a year or so. How did you feel coming back? Were there any challenges, anything that, that worried you, felt you missed out? Did you have any concerns or, or nerves? No, you know what? It was the opposite. I think once you go through the experience of, of being with the national team in World Cup, it really crystallizes how you want to play the game. You know, it's really clear. You get that break. You get that time off. And, you know, anything that might have come about during your experience becomes crystal clear on how you want to approach things. So that was, it, was, it was more enthusiasm about coming back and eagerness to come back and employ what you've thought about and the experience you've gained. So that was, uh, that was more about what it was returning. Competitive fire. I want to win as a coach. Yeah, you know, you yeah, could, a little you know, of that. The yeah. Rugby World Cup experience, though, has to have helped you in terms of coaching on the road because, in essence, there was no home for the Eagles, and you, you know, you're coaching in England specifically. You know, so you're used to coaching on the road. Is that? I think the whole Eagle experience really helped uh, this whole road experience. Now, um, you know, just having to deal with uh, things that come up, different cities, different times. How do you go out doing your business? What works? What doesn't? When they need to rest? Um, we had a great manager, Tristan Lewis, you know, who is phenomenal to work with. And obviously, obviously, you know, <laughs> might not be too happy what, with what Chelsea. Was the, uh, what, what was the media guy like on that trip? Um, rarely, rarely saw him. He was usually having tea and paying forty yeah. pound notes for <clears throat> yeah. fines that were ridiculous. A lot of fines he was paying, so yeah. he was at the ATM a lot. They thought um, that the media job was a high paid position. I think you know. <laughs> Uh, but he was the eagle of media managers. Hey, Steve. The manager's eagle. manager? Yeah, manager's manager. Mike, I know that you're, you're out of time and we got to get you out of here. But before you go, I want to let fans know, tickets are going like hotcakes for that match, your home opener at MCU Park in Coney Island. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be Friday night. Damn the torpedoes in terms of the weather. It won't matter. It's St. Paddy's Day weekend. But ticket prices are, if I'm not mistaken, 20 to $45 and $10 for students. That is nothing to be part of history. But, guys, we are out of time. We could do this all day. But um, I'm with the Bill Belichick of Major League Rugby and that he's got three of his understudies coaching teams here uh, out of the Tolkien tree, so to speak. And on behalf of you, Mike Tolkien, I know that you're cringing with me saying that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And Mr. Steve Lewis, who looks every bit of taking the red eye in from Vegas. Guilty. Uh, guilty. Guilty as charged. I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up, signing off.